Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwander and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we continue our conversation with Norm Bihorn. He's the Managing Director and CEO of the Sales Readiness Group. He's also the author of the High Impact Sales Management book. And there's one chapter that I'm excited about is, is how to motivate salespeople. So tell us more about it. Um, motivation, I think, is more of a leadership skill uh, than anything else for a sales manager, right? Well, motivation definitely is a great leadership skill, but we also think that great sales managers, one of their key elements for being a high impact sales manager is being a great leader. So I've been in sales, uh, you know, for probably sales or sales management for close to 30 years. And when I think back on my career, I really think most fondly on those people that were not only great technical managers, but the people that could lead and inspire you. And so you want to work for people who know how to inspire other people and motivate a team and put their team kind of at the forefront. So how do you motivate salespeople, a team that, uh, you know, there's a lot of diversity in a team. Yeah. So in how, do you, how do you do this effectively? So you have millennials, you have uh, all the salespeople, you have uh, all kinds of personalities. I think, I think, you know, it is a challenge. And I think one of the key things for managers to really understand that one size doesn't fit all. And so I think sometimes the manager really thinks, well, what is it that motivates me? And then tries to reflect that on that team. Right. But if I'm a manager kind of been in uh, the, you know, in an organization for 25, 30 years, uh, what motivates me may not be motivational to a millennial or to someone who's, you know, maybe even more advanced their career. So we like to think about what are the common motives for salespeople. So there's money. And I think that sometimes uh, money is kind of overrated. It's really important. People need to be able to make their mortgage payments or their rent payments. They need to be able to provide for themselves right. and their families. But there's a lot of other things that are important. Opportunity, right. teamwork. Uh, some people like to work independently. Visibility, excellence. So right. we found that there are different motives and we have to understand what those motives so are. So what you're saying is that the sales manager really needs to open up and uh, differentiate so even though they may have grown up as a salesperson that appreciated money and buying things and buying power, right. um, one size doesn't fit all. One size doesn't fit all. So, you know, money's pretty obvious. If money's the motivator, you want to talk about how sales success ties itself to financial success. Uh, and so money is important, but there are often more than one motive, and motives can change over the time. Right. Someone got married and now they have a child, money may become more important. Right. Opportunity is also important. Some people are really looking for sales as a way to advance their careers. So being able to tie how success has, will, has led to success for others in sales and with the opportunities that are available. Some people love being a part of right. a team. I think part, particularly for millennials, if you think about the whole glue behind social networks is the ability to connect with others. So people sometimes thrive on teamwork. So you have team goals. Right. Other people are lone wolves. They want to be independent. So they right. have to be managed differently. Right. Uh, I will say one caution as it relates to independence. The autonomy has to be earned. You don't want to just take a new salesperson and kind of put them out there on their own and say, oh, you can be totally independent. Right. They have to earn that trust. Right. So what is the secret sauce for uncovering the motives of a salesperson? So I think the first thing is really observing them. And that could be if you have an inside sales team, kind of listening to their conversations, maybe hearing kind of the conversation in the coffee room, kind of what's important to them, seeing what's kind of going on in their lives. And then when you have your, um, you know, your coaching sessions or you're just kind of talking with them over a cup of coffee, start asking, say, oh, well, what would you like to achieve oh, you know, in the course of your career if you're talking to a millennial and start understanding. Someone who's a little bit more advanced, hey, you know, you and I both been in this for a long time. As you kind of think about, you know, going forward, what is it that right. you really want to accomplish? What's, what's important to you? And so I think it's a combination of observing and listening and just having very authentic conversation. Right. So what if in the authentic conversation it comes out that uh, the salesperson for one reason or another is demotivated? I think you have to look at what are the underlying causes of that demotivation. Is it... Um, a skill set deficit, so in other words, do they not necessarily have the right skills? Because that would mean they probably need some training and coaching. Uh, is it an attitude issue? If it's an attitude issue, they may need some performance counseling. So it's really interesting you ask that because also in this book we explore, depending on the causes of performance gaps. So someone mm -hmm. isn't performing, right. uh, motivation and attitude is one of those performance right. gaps. Right. And motivation and attitude require more than simple right. coaching. They right. actually require some right. counseling right. and getting to what are the underlying drivers. What would you say to a salesperson who is an average performer and uh, also a conformist that uh, sort of mirrors what the sales manager has been recommending, but 
they never go beyond the plateau, the, the, the self-limiting you know, ceiling that they're creating. You know, provided they have a good attitude, I think I would really recommend, um, you know, using coaching as the best for, when you think about coaching, coaching is about moving the middle. Yes. So if you take about that average performer, think about what are the things they're doing really well, and it may be that, you know, they're just not getting enough positive reinforcement. So when you think about a great coach, and they're working like with professional athletes, the first thing you want to do is play to that person's strengths and say, right. is there something I can do? If this person is really good with existing accounts, maybe I want to use them more for account management than new account acquisition. Right. So we want to think about how we can play to their strengths. Once we've done that, then say, you know, you know, we really think you're capable of taking it to the next level. What two or three areas do you think are holding you back? So we're asking an open-ended question and getting their feedback, and now we're getting their buy-in to a coaching plan. Thank Pierre, you so much. Thank Noah. you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.